All right, hey everybody. How's it going, Mr. Schmoyer here, your science teacher. I know that today we're gonna to be learning about humidity, and we're also gonna be learning about relative humidity. We're gonna be able to determine the relative humidity from a set of data, which will be the practice problems you'll work on soon. And we're also gonna be able to determine the relative humidity inside the science classroom. Just a quick reminder that the data I'm receiving today could be different when we actually do this in class. So I was just recording this ahead of time. What's important here is being able to develop the skill here to be able to determine the relative humidity either in this room or from a set of data. So if I zoom in here a little bit, quick reminder that humidity, right, is the measure of the amount of water vapor in the air. It depends upon temperature. Warm air is less dense and can hold more air than cold air. We learned last week in the past couple weeks about uh, density and warm air is lighter than cold air. Therefore, it could hold more moisture. We're gonna be determining something called relative humidity. Relative humidity is the percentage of water vapor that's actually in the air compared to the maximum amount of water vapor that could be in the air. This will be a percentage number out of 100. Basically, we have to find some information between two different temperatures. And how we do that is with something called a sling psychrometer. This right here is a sling psychrometer, right? It's two rulers uh, banded or taped together. And the only difference between them is we have a wet bulb, which is here. You can see that this uh, is going to be the wet bulb. It's actually a cloth surrounding the bulb of the thermometer and a dry bulb here which is dry, there's nothing that will make it wet. What we're gonna do is make this wet. We want the water to evaporate on this thermometer and it's gonna, um, basically we call that the rate of cooling, the wind chill factor. Think of it if you had some water on your hands and went outside on a cold day, you would feel your hands so much colder because that water is evaporating. That heat energy is being taken off of your skin. So think of that the same way here. We are adding water to this cloth and then we're gonna make it evaporate. What we're gonna do first, again, sling psychrometer made of two thermometers, wet bulb thermometer, dry bulb thermometer. A wet bulb thermometer has cloth covering that and it's moistened with water. The, the uh, psychrometer is spun by the handle and air blows over both thermometers. The wet bulb thermometer is cooled by evaporation. Then we compare the two thermometers, okay? What we're gonna have to do is measure the dry bulb temperature, measure the wet bulb temperature, compare the difference between them, find the dry bulb on this table, which I'll show you in a second, and then we're going to solve for relative humidity. So again, um, a couple things we're gonna need here. Sling psychrometer, right? And we need this chart or key here that helps us determine um, what the actual percent of humidity is in the room. So I need to look at two things right now. First, I need to look at the dry bulb reading. So if you look at that, we're gonna work in Celsius. It says 22, 22 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna take this on my chart. This is what you could use on your paper or in your science notebook, right? So we know we're gonna record 22 degrees Celsius. Now. I'm going to take uh, some water here and add it to the wet bulb. So I wanna make sure that this cloth is nice and wet here, so that way we can effectively get uh, the right measurement that we want. Now what I'm gonna do, this is why it's called a sling psychrometer, is because I'm going to have to sling it like this for an extended period of time. So I'm gonna do it off screen so you know. But here I am slaying this, it's going round and round. I'm making sure that this water is evaporating. So you wanna do it for a good amount of time, right? We wanna make sure our measurement here is as accurate as possible. So again, I'm gonna keep going. Takes a while, see I'm still spinning, still slinging.
Okay, now we're gonna look here. Now we wanna record our wet bulb thermometer reading and it is about 12. So what I'm gonna do now is record that number right here on 12. What we do now is we solve for the difference here between the dry bulb and the wet bulb temperature. So 22 minus 12 is 10. Now what we wanna look at, and you'll have access to this chart here, uh, on this chart, we are going to look at dry bulb temperature, which was 22, and the difference here, which was 10. So what we're finding here is we're gonna find 22, hold on and let me use my pointer, 22, and 10, so here we go. We're gonna see that that number is 24. So then we would write down right here that our relative humidity inside this room is 24%. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is how you determine the relative humidity either inside this classroom or from a set of data. What you're gonna be doing on the practice problems is you'll be given two sets of data and you'll have to solve for the relative humidity using this chart, which is also provided on your worksheet. If you have any questions, please ask me. I'm here to help you as we learn about relative humidity. Thank you.